Cornea plana is a genetic condition in which the cornea is flatter and smaller than normal. The condition can be mistaken as sclerocornea which is also associated with a smaller diameter and a flat cornea. This video will highlight the clinical characteristics of cornea plana, features differentiating this entity from sclerocornea and its management at an early stage and in an older age group. This is the unit who presented to us in the year 2004 after the parents noted that the baby had very small eyes. On examination, the neonate had horizontal oval small size corneas, a central cornea deep stromal nail opacity and a broad limbus showing clustered palisades in both the eyes. On slit view, the cornea appeared thin. A clinical diagnosis of cornea plana was made. The child was evaluated periodically and appropriate refractive correction was given. At his most recent visit in 2016, when he was 13 years old, his best corrected visual acuity was 20 by 40 in both eyes. Corneal topography showed flat corneas in both eyes. The axial length was in normal range. Specular microscopy showed a normal endothelial cell density for the child's age. The intraocular pressures and disc findings were within normal limits in both the eyes. The features differentiating cornea plana from sclerocornea are The corneal transparency is variable in cornea plana compared to sclerocornea where the cornea is almost opaque. Also, the location of the opacity is generally posterior stromal in cornea plana whereas in sclerocornea, the opacity involves full thickness of the corneal stroma. Cornea plana also has a thinner cornea than sclerocornea. The management of cornea plana is conservative unlike sclerocornea. A periodic refractive correction helps proper visual development in patients with cornea plana. Therefore, a keratoplasty is not warranted in these eyes. As seen in this case, for good visual development, regular follow-up along with appropriate refractive correction is essential in children with cornea plana. Longitudinal follow-up in patients with cornea plana, particularly when they develop senile cataract, may reveal interesting details. In another case, a 51-year-old female presented with complaints of gradually reducing vision in both her eyes since one year. Her vision was 20 by 320 in both eyes. She had no significant visual complaints before and was able to comfortably manage her routine until the previous year. On examination, she had features characteristic of cornea plana and significant cataract in both eyes. Cataract surgery was first done in her left eye and followed a few weeks later in her right eye. For intraocular lens power calculation, keratometry values and axial length measurements from LensStar were used and the IOL power was calculated using holiday formula. During the cataract surgery, a short scleral tunnel was made for easy maneuverability of the phaco probe in the small shallow anterior chamber. The side ports were made just outside the posterior extent of the broadened limbus. Capsular straining with tripan blue was done to enable better visualization past the central corneal opacity. A dispersive viscoelastic was used to protect the corneal endothelium during the surgery. An endoilluminator was used for safe and thorough removal of cortical matter. It also helps in adequate anterior and posterior capsule polishing to reduce the chances for future posterior capsule opacification. This is important as the AG laser capsulotomy later in these patients is challenging in view of the central corneal scarring. Intraocular lens was injected slowly inside the bag with good capsule margin and IOL optic overlap. Residual viscoelastic was washed thoroughly. Post-operatively, the visual recovery was good with 2060 best corrected visual acuity in both eyes. To conclude, cornea plana can be managed effectively with periodic follow-up, 
diffractive correction and intraocular pressure assessment. It is important to differentiate cornea plana from sclerocornea as keratoplasty is generally not warranted in cornea plana. Moreover, cataract surgery can be safely performed in these eyes with fairly good visual outcomes.